Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to another week in my kitchen here in Stockholm. Fall is just beginning, the air is turning crisp, the leaves are starting to fall and that means we are getting heavily into pie season. I got a bunch of pie recipes coming up for you guys, especially as we go towards Thanksgiving and so I wanted to do just one video about how I make my pie dough so we always have that as a reference going forward. The great thing about this recipe is that it's actually not a recipe, it's a ratio. It's gonna take you approximately two seconds to memorize and then you're gonna have it in your back pocket forever and you will always know how to make an absolutely excellent pie dough. The ratio is three parts flour, two parts butter, one part water. Three, two, one. First, we're gonna start with the butter. I don't have a food processor, but I don't need one because I have a box grater. So you just take your butter, make sure it's cold from the fridge, not frozen or this won't work, but also not soft. It is refrigerator cold and just start to grate. I'm grating it on the largest holes and just grate the whole block of butter. The whole trick to pie dough is keeping things as cold as possible without being like actually frozen. But you want your butter to be cold because that's where the flakiness in pie crust comes from. You have little chunks of butter left in between the flour and water dough that you made. These melt in the oven and create pockets of air when the butter melts and steams. And that is why pie crust is flaky. That is also why if we were to use a softened butter, you have the potential to work the butter into the dough, like really work it into the flour. And that's where you get pie crusts that are really like tough. And that's really not nice. So I'm grating and I'm keeping, look how beautiful this shape is. I always think it's really fun. And we're keeping this light and airy shape and just dropping it into the bowl and grating as quickly as possible. Make sure you don't grate your fingers. So this last little piece, we're just gonna work out anyways. So I just pop that in. There you go, butter is done. Now it's warm in my apartment, or if it's the summertime when you're making this, I suggest popping uh, your butter into the fridge for about an hour to get cold again. If it's winter or you're working in a cold environment, you can just skip that step. Once your butter is grated, it is time for the flour. So just dump the whole thing on in there. If you're gonna make a sweet pie, maybe you wanna add a tablespoon or two of sugar. If you wanna do a quiche or something, or if you like salt like I do, I just add two nice big pinches of salt because this is a really big pie dough recipe. This is 600 grams of flour, 400 butter, and it's going to be 200 water, and that's gonna be enough for three uh, like discs of pie dough, so three pie bottoms or one pie with a lid and then one pie, three discs of pie dough basically. This is going to be for some savory pie doughs, so I'm not gonna add any sugar to it, but you could if you wanted to, just throwing that out there. So now we're just going to go in and start flaking out our butter. And I'm not trying to compress the butter, so take some big chunks of butter and flake it out, flake it out. I love doing this. I always think it's so much more fun to do this by hand than it is to do it in a machine. And so every opportunity I get to do this by hand, I take. Obviously, if you're making you know, 50 quiches a week, like we used to do at a bakery I worked at in San Francisco, you're not gonna be making pie dough by hand. But when you're at home, I think it's really nice. So we have some big chunkies. Maybe this is a little bit too big. I'm gonna flake that out. But I'm just kind of going through and trying to find my biggest chunkies. These are too big, but things like this are going to be exactly the size that we want. So we're gonna flake out our bigger chunks with some flour. You don't need to be too like precious with this though, because things like this flake, it's pretty thin. And as we work in the water and as we kind of plastic wrap it and like shape it a little bit, that butter's gonna get worked even more and we wanna keep some nice large chunkies of butter in there. This looks absolutely gorgeous and I think we're ready to go. So it should look a bit like this. When you're done, I have some nice big chunkies of butter in there. That's gonna create a lot of pockets of air and they're about uh, pea-sized, bean size. I always love that every single pie recipe you come across, they tell you to have like, pea-sized chunks of butter. Like everyone says that. So yeah, 
pea sized. Now we're going to start to add in the water. Now, here's the thing. The ratio is one part water, which in this case would be 200 grams. However, it's a lot of feel. You don't want your dough to be too tacky or sticky. And depending on the time of the year, the butter you use, the flour you use, sometimes it's not a hard, you know, one part. So in this case, it may not be exactly 200 grams. And it's better to put in half and kind of, you know, oh, it's still a little dry, add a little bit more, add a little bit more, instead of just dumping the whole thing in, because you can always add in, but you can't take away, right? I've also, this was exactly 200 grams, but I added in a giant ice cube because it was just sitting out on my counter waiting for me. And you also want your water to be as cold as possible. So I've added about half and I'm gonna start adding it in. And at this point, I'm using what I like to call my gentle fingers. I'm not compressing it. I'm not really trying to get into it. I'm just trying to get everything coated with water without working my butter, without starting to work my flour and work up my gluten. I don't wanna do any of that. I just wanna distribute my water. So gentle fingers, gentle hands at this point. There we go, that's almost all of my water. So now I'm being very careful with my water. If you add too much water and you get it really sticky, it's also gonna hydrate the dough. And this has the potential to start working up gluten, which can also make your crust really tough and not nice. Now that things are starting to get a little bit wet, I'm just trying to see how much it sticks together. And you want it to be just barely able to hold itself together. It will hydrate more as it rests. So I think this looks really pretty good, actually. There's maybe some tiny little dry bits on the bottom that are not sticking. So I like to get down to the bottom and add my water directly just a little bit, that was like less than a tablespoon, to those dry bits, and that's gonna help this whole thing come together. Oh yeah, gorgeous. All right, look how shaggy that is. That is exactly what you want. Now we wanna wrap this in plastic. This is where things get a little bit messy. So I'm going to put this, I'm not gonna weigh it, because I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to divide this into about three pieces. That's probably more than a third, but whatever. And then I'm going to press it out so that it's about even thickness. And you want to make it as round as possible, but honestly, like when you start rolling it out, it's also going to get round. And then especially if you're going to use it in like a nice pie form, like you're going to be cutting your edges anyways. So just like round-ish. And then all of those little crumbly bits, I use the plastic to kind of press them into each other like that. And then I like to double layer the plastic because it's more secure. So flip that upside down. Boom, one pie, done. This portion of dough is even more crumbly. And again, that's fine because it will hydrate as it sits. Dough number two, whoop. And our last dough, which for me is always the scraggliest. See, even this little crumbly bit here that looks like it's just sand sticks together, so no worries. If you are going to use these today or within, I would say, three or four days, pop them in the fridge. If you wanna use them today, they need to sit for at least an hour. The butter needs to chill, the flour needs to relax. It's just gonna be such a better product if you allow it to relax in the fridge for at least an hour. In the freezer, this will last, I mean, I don't wanna say forever because it will get freezer burn eventually, but like basically forever. Since I am going to be using these in future videos, I'm gonna pop mine into the freezer and you will see them again in my upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in like daily vlogs, party prep, what I eat on a daily basis, that more type of content, I have all of it on my TikTok, which is linked down below. And if you're interested in more videos like this, a little bit more like long form recipes, then go ahead and check out this video next. And I hope you all have a great week and I'll see you next week. Hey,